Sister Tong, Sister Fang. Yes? After reading Almighty God's words, we all have this conviction. All of Almighty God's words are the truth, and they are the voice of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. They are the voice of God. But there's something I still don't understand. Go on. It's that the Lord Jesus once said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The Lord Jesus returned to heaven to prepare a place for us. So that means the place he prepared should be in heaven. Yes. If the Lord has returned, it should be to rapture us into heaven, to first lift us up into the sky to meet with the Lord. Yes. yes. What you're bearing witness to now is that the Lord Jesus has become flesh on earth, speaking and working. So how is he going to lift us up to the kingdom of heaven? Is the kingdom of heaven on earth, or is it in heaven? You go ahead. As for that... Brother Chet, huh? there's trouble. There are police in the village. What? It's not safe for us to have fellowship here. Everyone disperse immediately. Get the books and leave separately. Some from the front, okay, some from okay. the back. Brother, please organize everyone. Okay, you go ahead. Sister Tong, Sister Feng, let's go. Okay. okay. Zhang Guan, Mingui. Once we're through this big cornfield, the place is just ahead. Oh, this place is really hidden. From here on, we can feel at ease while having our gatherings. Yes. Thanks be to God. As for whether the kingdom of heaven is actually in heaven or on the earth, this is something that many people can't figure out. It's something we should have fellowship on. Yes. yes. First, we must understand what the kingdom of heaven really is. Everyone knows that heaven usually refers to the celestial, refers to God. So naturally, the kingdom of heaven refers to God's kingdom, and it is the kingdom where God is in power. It is Christ's kingdom. Wouldn't you all say so? Yes. So then is God's kingdom on earth, or is it in heaven? First, let's look at what the Lord's Prayer says. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Aren't the Lord Jesus' words very clear? The Lord requires that we pray for God's kingdom to come down to earth so that his will may be carried out on earth. The Lord Jesus did not say that God's kingdom would be established in heaven, and he particularly did not have us hope and pray for the day we would be raptured up to heaven. Think about it. Isn't that true? That's true. So isn't always hoping to be taken up to heaven to enter into God's kingdom out of line with the Lord's words and out of line with his will? Let's take a look at a prophecy in Revelation, chapter 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And then there's chapter 21, verses 2 to 4. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. Amen. Take a careful look. These two passages mention these two things. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. The tabernacle of God is with men. These refer to the kingdom of Christ being realized on earth. 
Almighty God's work of judgment in the last days is to establish the kingdom of Christ on earth. Before the great disaster comes upon the earth, God is going to make a group of overcomers, and this group will be the pillars of God's kingdom. They are the ones who will rule alongside God in the kingdom of Christ. Great. In the disaster, those who have been perfected by God will be the people of God's kingdom. Those who have never accepted Almighty God's work in the last days will be exposed and eliminated by God, and they will have no part of the kingdom of Christ. Oh, so that's how it is. The prophecies in the book of Revelation start with the utterances of God incarnate in the last days, and then go to the end of the great disaster when the kingdom of Christ is realized on earth, and then go on to the eternity of a new heaven and a new earth. When these prophecies are all fulfilled and completed, God's management plan will fully be fulfilled. At this point, do you think the kingdom of heaven prophesied in the book of Revelation is actually on earth or in heaven? It's, it's on, on earth. earth. Yes, that's right. The kingdom of Christ is on earth. So, all those who accept Almighty God's work in the last days, as long as they have been purified and perfected, will be the people of the kingdom of Christ. They are the ones who God will make into the group of overcomers before the disaster. They are those who are able to heed God's words and obey and worship Him. When the great disaster comes, those people will be protected and kept by God. Thanks be to God. But those who live in vagueness and imagination, who just long to be raptured into the sky and meet with the Lord, but do not accept Christ's judgment and purification in the last days, will be dealt with in the disaster. Most people will be destroyed. A few people will turn toward God through the crucible of the disaster. These are all true things that God is going to do soon. The work of God is so wise. Now, does everyone understand whether the kingdom of Christ is in heaven or if it's on earth? We understand. Thanks be to God. So God's kingdom is on earth after all. The prophecies in the book of Revelation are so clear, but we never figured it out. We really have been blind. The prophecies in the Bible are so profound. Without hearing this kind of fellowship, how could we possibly have understood them? It clearly says in the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The Lord's words are crystal clear. God's kingdom is on earth and his will will be carried out on earth. That's right. We used to recite this every day. How could we not understand? This is our fault for not paying attention to the Lord's words. We just blindly listened to the pastors and the elders. We didn't have a pure acceptance of the words in the Bible and we're living within our imaginations. We were just gazing at the clouds in the sky, waiting for the Lord to descend on a cloud to welcome us into heaven. Even in our dreams, we never could have imagined that God's kingdom of the last days would be realized on earth. It's true. The pastors could never identify the truth in the Bible. They just spoke to our own notions and imaginations. As a result, we've done so many ridiculous things in order to be raptured into the kingdom of heaven. Yes. For years, we've been running up to hilltops to pray thinking that would be closer to heaven. So when the Lord came, we would be raptured first. Thinking about it now, it seems foolish and even laughable. That's so true. I used to look up at the sky every time I walked out the front door. I would look for clouds in the sky that were white, that looked special. If I saw one, I would think, could the Lord be on this white cloud, coming to bring me up to heaven? This is how foolish we used to be, yes. We were just hoping and hoping, waiting and waiting. All those years of waiting didn't bring us to the Lord's coming and Him rapturing us into the sky to meet with Him. Only now do I know that He has already become flesh and is on the earth, but we've just been hoping to go to heaven. Haven't we been completely off base? Yeah. Yes, it is. I listened to the religious pastors and elders preach, but really didn't understand any of the truth, and I've done ridiculous things. It's not just you. The things I've done could be called ridiculous. Go on. 
Oh, you don't even know. I would often fast and pray to be lifted up into the sky and meet with the Lord. And I would generally force myself to eat less food. I thought if I ate less, I would be lighter. And when the Lord comes, won't it be easier to rapture me into heaven? <laughs> That's so foolish. It's so true. I believe in the Lord, but I haven't pursued him. I thought that once a person believes in him, their family is blessed. And as long as my wife really believes, when the Lord comes, he would take her up into the kingdom of heaven. I could just hang on to her shirt tail, and I'd be taken up along with her. <laughs> We've really been looking into getting into the kingdom of heaven too simplistically. 